Several people tasked with issuing emergency alerts were not federally certified to send messages through the computerized warning system before Saturday's false alarm. Gina Mangieri is always investigating and learned that while pushing for answers from emergency officials about training. And Gina, they gave you those answers today. That's right. We've been asking all week. Now, none of the three uncertified workers were on shift on Saturday. So th that was okay, but that's out of a staff of about only 10 officers mm -hmm. and four bosses. Now, those three have since finished their certification, and, but that now means that a certified operator still made the mistake. Despite that FEMA stamp of approval, despite the software training that the vendor says all users should have received. The state also says they had their system for wireless alerts like we got Saturday set to only do one alert per topic at a time. No going back, no override, so to speak. Half an hour later, they figured out another way, thanks to a worker from a different branch who wasn't even in the building Saturday morning. The second message was actually produced by a telecommunications branch employee who took it upon himself to say, okay, how can we send a follow-on message? So he used a slightly different protocol, composed the app or, or created the app, wrote the message, and then remotely connected in on a secure line to send that particular message in. It was a workaround. That's right, right. It was a very creative workaround, okay? And the coordination with FEMA which was really lasted less than a minute, was just to ensure, hey, we think that this is, meets the criteria for this particular type of messaging, okay? Do you agree? And in about 45 seconds, FEMA said, yes, we agree with that. FEMA told us first, early Monday, that Hawaii could have done that on its own, didn't need their approval. The software maker showed us how the standard system already had tools for creating a quick follow-on message whether from scratch or just backing up. Where the vendor said they could have just backed up and even went through the same template and used it and hit resend, do you agree? I would say that that's probably not the type of thing that somebody who's working in the state warning point would be tasked to do at that juncture. Well, now, of course, Hawaii has now programmed that false alarm quick link. And also during today's hearing, it was interesting. The state also said if a missile attack were to happen, FEMA would likely know first because they're in a direct communication bridge with the military. They'd probably send out their own alert message like mm. this. So, of course, we asked, well, why is the state doing their own alerts then if they're just going to fire that first? They tell me they can send it to just our state and also that by doing it with the state, they control the sirens and all of the other outreach that FEMA wouldn't be able to trigger. All right. Thank you, Gina.